Are you, make sure to be super tight on my sweating face. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Panos, and I directed a movie called Beyond the Black Rainbow, and I'm here at uh, Amoeba Records doing What's in My Bag. <laughs> This is a movie I remember from my childhood, uh, The Fly 2, which features one of the most traumatizing scenes in the history of cinema, where uh, they teleport Eric Stoltz's dog, and then they tell him that they put it to sleep. But years later, he finds it down a uh, hole in a pit, and it's uh, wailing in pain and being fed gruel. So if you love feeling bad, I highly recommend watching The Fly 2. Can you do an imitation of the dog uh, howling in pain? Uh, this is one of the most underrated uh, Ridley Scott films, Black Rain, starring Michael Douglas. It's really beautiful and it's got an amazing Andy Garcia decapitation sequence in it, and uh, not many people know or talk about Black Rain, so uh, I really highly recommend checking it out. Did Black Rain have any impact on uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow? I mean, every Ridley Scott movie from the 80s had an impact on Black Rainbow, uh, cinematography-wise and, and, and framing-wise. I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of, uh, of Ridley Scott, yeah. This is a movie called Basket Case. Watching it now, it's just more of a comedy, but as a child, I became horribly terrified of uh, Belial, the, uh, the mutant uh, twin brother, and uh, lived in fear of him being underneath my bed. So, you should watch that. We're going through my childhood traumas on, on film here, which leads us to Poltergeist, which uh, I went to see when it first came out opening weekend. And uh, as soon as this scene happens, there's a scene where a tree comes to life and rams its, its uh, branch through the window and grabs a kid and starts eating him. So I begged my mother to leave, so we left the theater and went to another theater in the multiplex where they were showing Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. And uh, we sat down just in time for the scene where uh, Khan puts those earworms into their heads. So it was kind of like a little bit of an out of, out of the frying pan into the fire scenario. Have you watched Poltergeist recently? No, I've been building up to it. But, you know, obviously I love RoboCop and I have a vivid memory of going to see this. I think at the, at the Man Bruin in uh, West Hollywood when it first came out. And at the end of the movie, uh, a man in the, uh, in the balcony yelled out, uh, RoboCop for president, and uh, I think everybody in the audience agreed that, that RoboCop would make a great president, and uh, I still think that. Ben-Hur has, like, for a long time, ever since I was a kid, it was maybe one of the earliest films that I ever saw, and it's always been one of my favorites, particularly because of the chariot race scene, which is one of the most, for its time, and still holds up today, next level, insane action sequence, and also, there's an amazing scene in the bowels of a slave ship where uh, a man beats a drum and they have to uh, achieve different speeds of rowing uh, in, the, in this uh, slave ship, which is really, really hilarious. <laughs> epic Ben-Hur, fittingly epic Ben-Hur box. <laughs> Kali Minogue boombox. <laughs> I love really uh, poppy dance music, and I love Kylie Minogue, Can't Get Out of My Head. I like uh, Miley Cyrus' song, Party in the USA. And right now, I actually can't remember her name, but uh, Call Me Maybe is probably my favorite song in the history of the world right now. Hey, I just met you. This is crazy, but here's my number. So call me maybe. This song, this album has a lot of personal significance to me because, you know, at the the point that I heard this album, the only music I'd ever heard pretty much was uh, an ABBA cassette that my parents had that uh, I would take into a bush and listen to it because I felt like ashamed to listen to music when I was young. But then uh, when I was in school, there was a, like a bad kid that was like a year ahead of me. And he was always like walking around with his, uh, with his Walkman on and, uh, and one day I asked him, his name was Gayu. 
I said, hi, guy. I said, guy, what are you listening to? And he said, this. And he handed me the Motley Crue Shout of the Devil cassette tape, which had their faces on the cover of the cassette. And I said uh, to him, those are the ugliest chicks that I've ever seen. And he said, those aren't chicks. That's Motley Crue. And uh, that was basically the beginning of the end for me. My life just was straight as spiral into debauchery and, uh, and self-abuse from that point on. And uh, me and Phil were talking about things that we can't believe exist. Phil who works here at Amoeba and, and at CineFamily. And I think this kind of takes the cake for things that I cannot fucking believe exists. Beastly Nintendo DS game, which uh, I'm kind of drawn to, I'm strangely drawn to it. I want it, I want to play it. You, you wanted to say uh, thanks. like thanks and check out my movie Beyond the Black Rainbow on DVD and Blu-ray. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Me boss.